Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about UMask uh, <laughs> and what it does and what you should probably have it set to um, and why, why it matters. But anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so I did another video on file modes and UMask is very closely related to file modes, so I will link that in the description. Um, but to get started, I wanted to show you kind of the default behavior when you create a file and when you create a directory. So we're gonna to do touch foo and make dir dir. Um, and if we look at the modes on these two, you'll see that foo is read writable by us, uh, it's readable by groups and readable by others. And the directory is similar, it's read, write, and executable. And uh, just a quick refresher, executable on directories means you can list them because um, you can't really run a directory that doesn't really make sense. So they reused this, uh, executable bit to mean listing. Uh, and then the unprivileged user can read and list and read and list, um, either the, the group member or the other member. Um, and the reason that these values are different uh, comes down to UMask, and UMask is what sets up how these get created. Uh, you can think of UMask as a bit mask on the default permission bits that would get set up. So if we, uh, um, and UMask is a shell built-in, so if you run it with no arguments, it will just tell you the current UMask in octal. So this is, uh, there's a particular, there's the write bit that is, uh, you know, if we were to view this in binary, it would be 1010 uh, ending here. So this this is the, um, the bit that's set here. Uh, and so you'll see that in both the directories and in the files, that bit gets inverted. So a, a UMask, removes the default uh, permission bits. You can also set the UMask by calling UMask and doing a new value. If we were to set it to all zeros, so essentially turning off the UMask, uh, now if we were to, let's remove, and this is not a good idea to set it to this, but uh, if we were to move those and do our touch command again, you'll see now that uh, this file has read, write, read, write, read, write, because this bit was not masked. Uh, and this is a not a good permission because it means anyone on the system can modify this file, uh, which is usually not a good thing. Usually you want only your user and maybe the group uh, to be able to modify the file. And you'll see that the directory also has the writable bit by anyone on the machine. And, uh, you know, <laughs> LS is also highlighting this bright green to be like, hey, uh, now look out here, this, this directory has uh, global write permission, which is usually not a good thing. Um, another common UMask that I've seen before is to do UMask 0002. Uh, this goes again, and touch those again. This will make it so that it is writable by your group membership, but not by the unprivileged user. So this, this makes it so anyone in the same group that this got created as will have permission here. Um, I usually prefer 0022 myself uh, just to have the you know, most sane <laughs> uh, permissions from a security perspective. Um, you know, only allow myself to write my own files and not allow anyone else to do that. Um, but you know, depending on how things are set up, it may be different. Um, I decided to make this video actually because I was debugging a problem at work and the UMask was set incorrectly which led to nothing being readable or writable. Um, so you, can, you can set some particularly bad UMasks. For instance, if you did, you know, 777, that's all of the bits set. So now if I did touch, you have to delete them again. If I did touch foo and bar, you'll see that they have no readable or writable permissions. So I can't really do anything with these files, um, which may be not what you want. Um, but the, the particular UMask that I was dealing with was the other the opposite direction. Everything was global, readable, writable, and so it was not, not, desire, not a desirable output. Um, so I usually find it's a best practice to set UMask to 0022. Uh, interestingly, on, I think actually, on this version of uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu 2004, oh, you can't see the comment, but it says, and, 2004. Um, the, UMA the default UMask seems to have changed, so I had to set this in my bash RC. 
I actually haven't figured out why this changed or if it actually changed and it was just something I was observing that had been set before, uh, but I usually set this in my bash RC. So the other thing about UMask is it's inherited. It's kind of like, you can kind of think of it like, uh, you know, environment variables or you, know, you can kind of think of it like environment variables. It gets inherited by subprocesses and it's global within the process. So if you modify the UMask and then you call some other utility, it will inherit the same value that you have set here. So by setting this in my shell, any program that I run from my shell will have this particular UMask. Um, also note that within a process it's global, so you can't just like, you can't have one UMask in one place and a different UMask in another. It, applies to the whole process equally. Um, and actually I was looking through the man page of UMask <laughs> while I was um, while I was prepping for this video. And there's actually an interesting um, note down here, which is that the UMask function, it's impossible to fetch the processes UMask without at the same time changing it. So there, there is always a race if you need to change the, if you need to find the current UMask value. Uh, I think the reason this is the case is it's not common to request UMask value, just you know, trust that it works. Um, and so they didn't make a direct accessor for it. Um, but the UMask command that we saw before, you can see that you know, it, it prints out the particular value here. I think the way that Bash does this is on startup, it collects the UMask and sets a default value and um, you know, re records that value in, in process. So it's managed separately, so it can implement a built-in command that shows the current value without actually falling victim to this. Um, but I don't know. I, <laughs> I haven't looked at the source of Bash. That would just be how I would implement it. Um, but anyway, that's UMask. Hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.